Good morning, Calvary. Pastor Chad here with your word for the day. It's Monday, and I'm glad that you're with us. I, I do want to remind you before we dive into Psalm 95 that this Friday and Saturday is our 24-hour prayer event where we are encouraging you to sign up and pray. You can sign up online and, and join us and take a 15-minute segment uh, online. Or you can sign up to be in person and come to Sweetwater Campus and pray in person. But we just want, uh, as a church, to be covering uh, our church, our community, our nation in prayer. And we're inviting you and your family to be a part of that any way that you choose to be a part of it. So I hope you'll uh, go online to our website, sign up, and take a 15-minute uh, time. I don't care if it's at 2.15 in the morning or 2.15 in the afternoon. We just want us to be praying together for, again, our congregation, our community, and our nation. Hey, today we're looking at Psalm 95, and it's a psalm about worship. Uh, so let me ask you this. What are your first worship memories? You know, uh, you think way back to your experiences in church and your experiences in worship. What are those? Are those memories that are touching? Are they memories that are funny? Are they memories about you enduring boredom, being in big church? See, uh, I grew up going to church all the time, and, and my early memories are of wanting to go to big church with uh, my parents. Even though my mom was in charge of the nursery, it was so embarrassing for her, I'd beg to go to big church. Uh, I was a you know twisted child. What can I say? And uh, but I remember being in big church lots of times through lots of boring services. And I always liked the music. I always liked the singing. But uh, when it got to the preaching, I had to you know find something to do to pass the time. And and maybe you're like me, and and you looked up at the ceiling and you're counting the ceiling tiles, or you're counting the cracks in the ceiling, or how many lights there are. Or, this is crazy, but I actually did this for, for a while. I remember being uh, late childhood, early adolescence, and my dad had a, a pocket watch, and I would ask him for the watch, and then I would hold my breath and see how long I could hold my breath uh, during the sermon. So I, I would do stuff like that. Uh, well, Psalm 95 is about worship and about what God wants us to do in worship. Listen to these verses as the psalmist instructs us. He says, O come. Let us sing to the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Let us come into his presence with thanksgiving. Let us make a joyful noise to him with songs of praise. For the Lord is a great God and a great king above all gods. In his hand are the depths of the earth and the heights of the mountains are his also. The sea is his for he made it and his hands formed the dry land. O come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord our Maker, for He is our God, and we are the people of His pasture and the sheep of His hand. Beautiful call to worship. God is calling us to worship Him. And so let me just talk about worship and what we see there and, and what makes up worship. Worship, first of all, is praise. You, you heard that. Oh, come, let us sing to the Lord. Let's make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. We're supposed to come to him with a joyful songs of praise. Uh, if you have difficulty coming into the presence of God and being grateful for who he is, expressing thanksgiving for what he's done in your life, or just praising him because of his majesty and glory, uh, then you're going to have difficulty worshiping God the way he wants. Because songs of praise, praise is part of it. And, and I just hope you can celebrate Jesus completely. Another part of it is, is truth. It's not really worship of God unless it involves truth. And of course, we use scripture as our truth. It tells us who God is and what he wants us to do and how he wants us to live. And, and, and the psalmist recognizes truth. He starts talking about God. He says, for the Lord is a great God and a great king above all gods. He talks about him uh, creating the earth and the sea and holding it in his hands and being a part of its creation. See, we have to tell the truth about who God is, about what he's done, and about how we can know him and please him. So it's praise, it's truth, and then worship involves surrender. Surrender. Come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord, our God, our maker. See, it involves surrender. For it to be real worship, biblical worship, we have to come to a place where we acknowledge that God is in charge and we are not, that we are servants and he is master. And when we come to that place, then we submit to him gladly. 
That's pictured by bowing down before God. That's pictured in kneeling before him and recognizing that he's the authority over us. And it's all because we belong to him. We yield our control to God because we're the sheep of his pasture. We're the people that, that belong to him. And so that's what biblical worship looks like. Uh, by the way, I know right now we're not gathered for worship together. Uh, we're going to pray together. We're going to continue serving God together. We've been doing projects in his name with uh, uh, the school district, with all the, you know, we're, we're still serving God. But here's the thing. Uh, worship is something that is your responsibility. It's on you to worship God. And, and yes, uh, I look forward to the day. Hopefully early September we'll be able to get together and worship as a group. But some of you are going to choose to be online. Online worship is, is just as significant. But let me challenge you to do this. Uh, however you decide to worship, whether it's online or in person, worship God. Worship God by yourself. Uh, I love to worship in the car. Put on praise music and worship God. Uh, or maybe you want to worship in your house and gather your family or your friends together and, and celebrate God's goodness together. But here's the thing, however you decide to worship, remember it involves surrender. And then there's a warning in this psalm when he's talking about worship, and it's simply this, today if you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts. Do not harden your hearts. See, every time we come into the presence of God and worship, well again, whether it's personally or corporately, God is there and God is speaking truth into our lives. And we can either say, yes, I surrender, I will do what you ask, or we can resist, ignore, and go on living lives our way and reaping what we've sown. Uh, I'm going to encourage you today to surrender to Jesus, to worship him. And if you hear his voice in anything I've said or anything you read or anywhere else that God speaks to you today, please don't harden your hearts. Just kneel before the Lord because he is your God and he is your maker and he wants to bless you. Calvary, I hope you have a beautiful day. God bless.